know, I, I, I like to drink. I, I like a tipple. Um, but um, I also um, like to stay away from it, too. I, I've had too many wonderful friends who've really hurt themselves uh, with alcohol. Um, and I'd warn against that. No, I, I don't think... I think people, creative people think that their creativity and their bohemian lifestyle gives them license uh, to be dysfunctional people. It, it gives them uh, the freedom to drink too much and to uh, be bad at paying their bills and to shave irregularly. Um, and paying your bills and shaving irregularly you know, can have their downside, but alcohol can have a real downside. You, um, it doesn't give you that license, um, and it, it doesn't make you more creative. Uh, I, I, I know people who have been absolutely paralyzed uh, by drink and by other drugs. Uh, it's, you do get that romantic notion, like, I want to be Fitzgerald, I want to be insane, and I want to be miserable. You know, when you're young, when you're young and you're a writer, you want to be miserable. You want to be that tragic figure, you know, the, the genius taken too soon. Um, you want to be uh, the alcoholic, the suicide. The, the, these are these are the real heroes, the 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 people who grind it out every day and, and, and live to be a hundred. You know who wants to be E. L. Doctorow? You know he, he's a, a wonderful writer, but there's there's no romance there. Um, but you know you want to be Hunter Thompson. Um, but I don't think I think E. L. Doctorow's probably been a better writer longer than Hunter Thompson was you know, a, a good writer uh, because he's had more normal habits. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even like a big E.L. Doctorow fan. I, I just picked him as a, as a uh, long-lived writer. Um, but, you know, Hunter Thompson, who, boy, there, there, there's not a better political book than Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail 72, and, and there's not a funnier book than Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Um, but, I mean, anything he wrote in the past 30 years, I, I would say was probably, you know, largely unreadable. I, I guess you could get through it, but, you know, the, the spark isn't there anymore, and then that kind of got, it got killed in him, and I, I think um, I, he probably realized that, too. Um, but, you know, for 20 years there, from the early 60s to, you know, 1980 or so, he was great. I don't, I don't know if the drugs spurred that creativity. I, I, um, I think it was all of a, of a piece. He, um, he was a crazy man, and he wrote like a crazy man, and he lived like a crazy man. But I don't think the the drugs made him the, the crazy writer that he was. Uh, drugs can certainly give you a new perspective, but uh, generally they're stultifying. You know, marijuana stultifying, uh, LSD. I guess fascinating when you're 18 years old, kind of a brain killer. Um, you know, I, I think you have to, we all have our adolescent uh, fantasies and, you know, I'm going to be this guy, I'm going to be Rimbaud and blah, 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 but um, it, it's, it's not the way to happiness in life, certainly, but it's also, it's not the way to, to, to great writing. Um, it, it generally just gets in the way. Uh, I, actually, you know what, I'm, I, I'm more, a bit more lyrical when I'm hungover. Uh, my poetry's got a, a, a little leader. Um, but if I take a sip of alcohol, I, I can't write. You know, it, it, it kills the, uh, the spark in me.